welcome back to Teen East, your music show bringing you career highlights of famous and emerging stars in the Middle East. Today we'll talk about the legendary Fayrou, who is known for her own music genre, quintessentially Lebanese, and highly associated with nostalgia to the golden days of the country. Let's learn more. Lebanon's ambassador to the stars, born Nohad Haddad on the 21st of November 1935. With her family, Nohad lived in a home in a cobblestone alley called Al Blat in Beirut, living in a single room of a typical Lebanese stone house facing Beirut's Greek Orthodox Patriarchate school. They shared a kitchen with the neighbors. Her father worked as a typist in a print shop. Her mother Lisa, also Lebanese, stayed home and took care of her four children. Nohad was a shy child and didn't have many friends at school. She was very attached to her grandmother, who lived in the mountains, and she spent her summer holidays there and seemed to enjoy rural village life. During the day, Nohad would help her grandmother with house chores. She would sing all the way to the spring and back, as she helped by getting fresh water for her. By the age of 10, Nohad was already known at school for her unusual singing voice. She would sing regularly during school shows and on holidays. This was how she came to the attention of Muhammad Flayfil, a well-known musician and teacher at the Lebanese Music Conservatoire, who happened to attend one of the school's shows in February 1950. Impressed by her voice and performance, he advised her to enroll at the School of Music, which she did. At first, Nohat's conservative father was reluctant to send her there. However, he eventually allowed her to go on one condition, that her brother accompanied her. <laughs> Muhammad Flayful took a close interest in Nohad's talent. He taught her to recite verses from the Quran in the recitative style known as Dajweed. On one occasion, Nuhad was heard singing by the famous Halim al-Rumi, head of the Lebanese radio station and a prominent musician of the Golden Age, also the father of the famous Lebanese singer Majd al-Rumi. Al-Rumi was impressed by her voice and noticed that it had a rare flexibility that allowed her to sing both Arabic and Western modes admirably. Al-Rumi appointed Nuhad as a choir singer at the radio station in Beirut and went on to compose several songs for her. It was Halim al-Rumi who chose her stage name of Fayrouz, which is the Arabic word of a turquoise gem. A short while later, Fayrouz was introduced to the Rahbani brothers, Asi and Mansour, who also worked at the radio station as musicians, and they discovered her talent. The chemistry was instant, and soon after, Asi started to compose songs for Fayrouz, one of which was Aitab, the third song he composed for her, which was an immediate smash hit in all of the Arab world, establishing Fayrouz as one of the most prominent singers in the region. <laughs> Asi and Fayrouz were married on 23rd January 1955. Fayrouz and Asi had four children, Ziyad, the most creative of the new Rahbanis, musician and composer. Layal died in 1987 of a brain stroke. Hali and Rima, a photographer and film director. <laughs> The first large-scale concert was in 1957, as part of the Baalbek International Festival, which took place under the patronage of the Lebanese president, Camille Chamoun. She performed alongside the British prima ballerina Beryl Goldwyn and the ballet Rombert. Fayrouz was paid one Lebanese pound for that show, 
Musical operators and concerts followed for many years, eventually establishing Fairuz as one of the most popular singers in Lebanon and the Middle East. At very challenging post-colonial times, where the music scene was dominated by Egyptian singers. Let's listen now to the famous song by Fairuz, Nassam Alayna Al Hawa, from the movie Bint Al Haris or The Guardian's Daughter. Ya Nijmi, Kif Kul, Kif Al Balad. Al Balad Mishta Alaik, and Nahna Kamen. Wallah, Ya Mademoiselle Nijma, Nahna and Abuki Jalsat Alah Al Bahar, and it's Zakar Al Ayam. Thank you. 
كمان عم بتنام كبي ايه هيدي اوضتي وهيدي اوضة هيك سميتها It's impossible to look at the works and career of Fayrouz without observing the Asi factor in almost all of them. Let's see what Fayrouz has to say about this part of this 1998 documentary by Frédéric Matéran on Fayrouz talking about Asi's illness and death. The documentary also depicts why Fayrouz abstained from performing during the civil war. Let's see it together with English subtitles. Comment ne pas croire à Assi Même Mansour se laisse prendre au piège du perpétuel en train de son frère. Il suffit qu'il ait un piano à sa portée pour que quelques notes le ramènent vers de nouveaux projets. حس بالخوف أكثر في كذا خوف يعني في الخوف من إنه لما بيقدم الواحد عمل جديد إنه يحبوا الناس هذا طبيعي بعدين الطريق اللي مشيت فيها بعدين لما مرض عاصي صرت حس بخوف علي وعلى حالي وعشغلنا وعلى يعني شامل يمكن عم جاوبك غلط من اللي سألتني إياه. Le théâtre Piccadilly del Amra a fermé ses portes. Il n'y aura plus de comédie musicale des frères Rabani. Le Liban est en guerre. Aassi vient de mourir et la voix de Férouz résonne comme le glas de tout ce qui maintenait ensemble une famille, un peuple et leur histoire. كل ما غني مطرح أكيد بيكون هو موجود موجود مش بس بالغنية موجود شخصه وافتكر يعني إني عم بعمل إشياء مثل ما هو بحبها Vous qui n'avez pas su préserver la ville du bonheur de vivre, des erreurs et des mensonges qui ont causé sa ruine, n'espérez pas que Féroz chantera pour vous. Oui, vous qui l'avez plongé dans la désolation et mettez le pays à feu et à sang, entraîné dans des vendettas obscures. Elle et les siens, les gens de paix qui ont accompagné Aassi à sa dernière demeure, n'insulteront jamais sa mémoire en laissant les égarés s'emparer de ses chansons. Oui, ne comptez pas sur Férouz pour oublier tout ce que vous avez détruit. Et dans le fracas de vos armes, n'attendez que la réponse de son silence. He's witnessed Fayrouz's comeback along with the country's reconstruction during that decade where the capital was rebuilt. Fayrouz produced six albums, two Philemon Wahibi tributes with unreleased tracks, included a Zaki Nassif album, three Ziyad Rahbani albums, and a tribute album to Asi Rahbani orchestrated by Ziyad and held a number of large scale concerts, most notably the historic concert held at Beirut's Martyrs Square in September 1994 to launch the rebirth of the downtown district that was ravaged by the civil war. Fayrouz appeared at the Baalbek International Festival in 1998 after 25 years of self-imposed absence, where she performed the highlights of three very successful plays that were presented in the 1960s and 1970s. She also performed a concert in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Arena in 1999, which was attended by over 16,000 spectators, mostly Arabs. 
Ever since, Fairuz sold out concerts at the Beit Din International Festival, Lebanon from 2000 to 2003. Kuwait, Paris, the United States, Amman in 2004, Montreal, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Baalbek, Athens, Damascus and Bahrain. Fairuz now works exclusively with her composer son Ziad. Her first album in the new millennium, Wala Keith, was released in 2002. In 2008, Fairuz had a remarkable performance in Syria where she was received by a crowd of 7,000 fans screaming her name at the borders at, as her car passed into the Syrian grounds. Mosques and prayers on the radio were all held back as Fairuz's songs played day and night through almost every media outlet and newspapers were all focused on Fairuz's legendary return after 20 years absence. Let's go back to Lebanon and listen to a medley of Christmas Fairuz classics from one of her recent concerts at the Platia Theatre in Julia. Widely known for her easy listening songs, referred to as morning songs, her music genre and vocal capacity has its own kind, that's why it's been studied at renowned music schools in Austria and other parts of the world. She's mostly revered in the Middle East for her topical genre where she paid tribute to the occupation of Palestine and other humanitarian issues. Also known for her religious work, especially her Christmas classics and her Good Friday Byzantine classics. Let's listen now to a very typical Rahbeni song by Fairuz, Ahadir al Bosta, a very popular song of two lovers going on a mountain trip on board a bus and describing the journey and the people on their bus. <laughs> The 78-year-old diva still thrills her audience with a performance which fuses with the mania she creates when she's seen on stage and throughout her concerts where she gains total audience engagement despite not talking on stage. Her connection with the audience goes through her performance. Fairuz's stage performance is known by her ecstatic yet subtle reactions mostly observed in the signature movement of her shoulders in the reaction to attaining a total amalgam between her vocal capacity and the Rahbani tunes. This very amalgam of a unique voice, disciplined performance and genius Rahbani music is what makes Fairuzism, as our producer Carl calls it, 
It's impossible to depict Fairuz's legendary works in one episode, but I still hope you've enjoyed this episode, a humble tribute to a living music legend. Keep following us on Facebook and let's go back to the late 80s to the Paris, Paris Olympia and watch Fairuz's live performing Zuruni Kulli Sana Marra or visit me at least once a year. Yeah, cool.